It's one thing to know that you have them or maybe even what they are. Um, and what I notice a lot when we talk about gifts is people think that they mean mm, their higher level abilities. So actually, this is a question I ask a lot of people who are interested in shaman school. It's even on my application. Um, it's some, I can't remember exactly how I phrase it, but it's something along the lines of, um, you know, what are your what are your gifts or, you know, what comes naturally to you? And what most people do is they answer with like, oh, what players that they're in tune with and, you know, whether they're a medium or a psychic or, you know, to what extent, um, you know, these higher level abilities are online for them. But those are not actually your gifts. Those are a human capacity that everybody has. And like many things, this is a spectrum. And so you might come in being, you know, on the heightened side of the psychic spectrum or on the, you know, uh, less intense side of the psychic spectrum. The same is true for empathy. It's not a gift. It's a spectrum. The same is true for all of the clairs. These are all abilities that every human has the capacity to um, have an experience with, right? This is how we tune into our higher knowing. And these are human capacities that have been shut off for a really long time. So now that they're coming back online, it's very exciting. And also it can be intimidating and scary if we don't know what's happening to us or what we're tuning into. And also we can get caught in a game of proving, of feeling like we're special because we have um, tuned into some of these capacities. When I refer to your gifts, what I'm actually referring to are sort of like things that people innately gain just as a result of being in your presence, right? So they're not things that you actually really cultivate or probably are even conscious of. When I say gifts, these are things that you're just a natural at that, that just um, affect people in a positive way without you having to exert any effort at all. So this might be something like um, the gift of bringing joy where people just tend to experience joy when they're in your presence. It might be a gift of um, you know, appreciation of the exquisite, of having um, you know, like high taste and giving people permission to have high taste. It might be Mm -hmm. um, the gift of opening pathways. It might be the gift of truth telling or authenticity, you know? Um, along my path, a few of the gifts that I've realized I've had aren't necessarily, again, because it's something I'm actively trying to foster, but it's from being in environments where, you know, my genius comes through and being in circles where, um, you know, sort of I'm, I'm in alignment with the group that I'm with and what I'm doing, and I'm not actually trying to do a thing, but what tends to happen in groups that I'm in is um, magic awakens within other people. And uh, I have a gift of, um, you know, expanding awareness, right? And again, these aren't things that I'm trying to do. They're just naturally, they come with the territory of being in my presence. So I share this just to um, invite you to go a little bit further and a little bit deeper with what your gifts even mean. And ask yourself, what do you feel like your true gifts really are? And let me add an extra frame here that oftentimes our gifts come from or are mm, a result of where our sort of spiritual experiences and knowing, maybe even our spiritual study or training, right? All of the different modalities we've been learning and all of the different ways we've been um, learning to access information and process stuff. All of that is part of our story. And then the other part of our story is all of our personal experiences. So usually the gifts you offer, the unique medicine that you have is the intersection of those two places. 
that's where your uniqueness is. And we actually can kind of up-level ourselves when we understand that. And when we begin to hone in on that and see what ways that we, again, just naturally do this. Because the, the sort of psychic senses, the higher abilities that we have the uh, capacity to experience, right? Um, we can know we have them and we can notice them throughout the day, um, but we don't have them because it's a fun trick or to show off or to show that we know some things or to prove that we can do some things. We actually have those because we're called here to help people deeply heal. That's what they're actually there for. And although I, as much as anybody, love to play in the realm of, um, you know, uh, spiritual guides and, you know, visiting different realms and working with different kinds of spirits and working with divination and tarot and working with crystals, all of these things that are fun and can be supportive um, in the end, or what's really true is that these are just tools that can embellish an experience, but they're not actually the power and they don't actually hold the healing. What holds the healing is your ability to use that cross section that you carry and offer that forward as a gift. And usually the way that we learn to do that is from having experience. And this is all part of the shamanic path, right? So something that's unique to the shamanic path is that all knowing is a result of direct experience. We can sometimes have um, you know, stories or we can have concepts that we bring up, but ultimately um, everything that you experience through the shamanic path becomes an imprint in your system. And that's actually where you heal from. You heal from the own inner knowing of what this thing is versus reading it from a book, right? Or mimicking what somebody else did or how it looked for someone else. You know, this is kind of a tangent, but it's coming through right now. I was actually having this conversation recently with someone around, um, around autism and people on the spectrum and how there's kind of a theory about, you know, them being like the next step in evolution. And, you know, I was sharing a story of working with uh, a, a teenager who, um, you know, was lower level functioning, um, but clearly very sensitive. And he didn't have, he had very little communication at all, uh, verbal communication at all, almost none. Um, but what he had a gift for is around other students, when a student was starting to get really anxious or kind of have like a little bit of an anxiety attack or get overwhelmed, he had a way where he would sit next to them and actually like stroke the back of their head and they would just calm down, right? Um, super interesting and impressive. Um, and so we can clearly see that he's tuned in to a different layer than most people are, right? And I share this because the healing wasn't that he stroked the back of the head, right? So we can look at that and be like, oh, that's how you do the thing. You stroke the back of the head. And then I might go and sit next to the kid and try that, but that doesn't work if I'm not actually in tune with the energetic of what's happening and embodying the work, right? And so this is what the shamanic path invites us to do is to learn how to be better healers by working on our own story and having a direct experience of the healing tools. Because we can read books and watch YouTube all day long. And I think that's great. I definitely encourage um, you to, you know, soak up as much as you can and, you know, gain as much as you can from all of the resources that were out there and, you know, feel into what feels in alignment for you, what feels right for you, what doesn't feel right for you. Right, you know, I've had a number of people that I've spoken to over the last few months that have played around with training with um, other other organizations or other companies, um, and learn certain things that they weren't in alignment with, and then they come to me and they're like, "Oh, well, I learned this, and I don't really actually like it or believe it," and um, and then they feel, but they feel like it's a rule, right? 
And so exploring different ways or different lenses is important. So you know what actually you are in alignment with and what you're actually not in alignment with. But within the world of shamanism, there are mm, not many rules. Now there are protocols. So there are standards that most people keep across the board. And then within shamanism, there's also you know, this is where we get a little bit of a mixed signal or um, where the line is blurring even more. So we, there is shamanism on its most basic foundational definition, right? It means a lot more, but the most um, foundational definition would be, um, you know, accessing the unseen realms um, and bringing that into the third dimension for the purpose of restoring harmony. Right. And then from there, it can mean a lot of different things and look a lot of different ways. And um, and of course, there's a huge overlap within the indigenous communities. So there are many who have a specific lineage and for lack of a better term, um, you know, a cultural religion. Right. Um, and it overlaps with shamanic practices and also a shamanic practice isn't the same as a Native American religion necessarily. Again, they can overlap, but they get used, that word gets used interchangeably a lot. And I just wanna be clear that it's not always the same, right? Um, especially when we are here in the US and a lot of this old stuff is kind of getting unearthed and many people are having experiences, realize, remembering their past lives, or working with native teachers. And so there's a confusion about, well, what is this? And um, so I just encourage you to keep exploring for sure, um, but pay attention to what actually feels in alignment with where you are and what you want. Um, not everything needs to be taken at face value or as a rule, right? We do wanna have respect, right? For what we're doing and in the way that we do it. Um, and also, you know, we get to discern what is actually true for us. And so, again, it's helpful to continue to read and learn tools, um, but I guarantee you that um, little trainings here and there and um, reading what works for somebody else is, um, not worth the amount of growth and confidence um, that you would actually get from really truly understanding the tools via live practice. This is how we mm, embody the understanding of the work. Otherwise, we're just mimicking or we might be mimicking, right? And that's okay too. Like we have to have like an en entryway into doing this work and into offering this work. The other place that we're at and that many people are starting to get called to, and I, and I just named that I, uh, so that um, it can be an affirmation if you need it, that we're really, among all of the paradigm shifts that are happening right now, one of the things that's shifting is the way we do medicine work and so we're used to having this frame because it's the frame we use on a lot of other of our structures in society where there's like an authority that knows a thing and then they are talking to the other people. And so it's easy to transfer that idea um, into, into the way we do healing. And the way that that looks is I have a power and I'm exerting myself and doing a thing for you. And when we do this, it might help somebody briefly. It might make us feel good. But the question that many of us are in is, is this actually even in service? Right? At what point is me um, believing that I can do a thing that you can't do actually causing a problem.
to what extent is my being in tune with my gifts or knowing that I have my gifts um, about me, how, to what extent is it for me versus for the client, right? And it's a tricky place. We dance here, right? So there are some times when it's important to be able to say as a practitioner, here's the truth, you know, and this is what needs to be said and, you know, and let it go. Um, and also there's a way that when we do this, we can actually take away someone else's power or their ability to discern for themselves or their ability to trust themselves, which isn't in service. This is the old system that somebody else knows more than you know, right? So as practitioners, where we're really being called is to be that next level embodiment, to be the, mm, to demonstrate the new way through our healing work. Mm -hmm. So, okay, one more topic here before I segue into, um, you know, some of the changes I'm making in my business and with Shaman School. <clears throat> this is around consumerism within the healing arts and holding ourselves, mm, holding ourselves um, with dignity and self-respect and self-worth. So in a lot of the coaching industry, you'll hear terms like, um, you know, like charge your worth, right? And that is kind of um, misleading because nobody can actually charge their worth because you can't put a worth, you can't put a amount on what a human is worth. Um, and and um, we can begin to play with money and what you're actually available for. So, what I've noticed, this is a little nitpicky, but what I've noticed because I speak to a lot of practitioners on a regular basis, and it's interesting, um, every once in a while I'll get, somebody will contact me that was interested in one of my services, but maybe they found like a mistake or a typo or you know something, a mistake in the tech somewhere, which I admit, super easy to do, um, working on that. And I'm also, you know, we can't hold ourselves back and make it all perfect all the time. It just takes, it just isn't worth the time to not offer what you have um, in exchange for perfection, right? So what's interesting is then it turns into this game of gotcha where it's like, aha, I found out that you made a mistake. So can I get this thing at a discount or can I get this thing for free? Or can I get this you know, specialty because you've made a mistake? And, you know, it's been an interesting learning for me because the part of me wants to be like, oh, I did get caught. Um, I did screw that up, actually. And then it's then it kind of swirls into like, oh, maybe maybe I do need to do that because, I'm, you know, I'm not perfect. And it starts questioning all the worth and all of these pieces. And then I come back around and I realize, like, actually, no, you know, like me making a typo doesn't make the work that I offer suddenly invaluable. And actually, the best teaching that I can have or share is that um, I'm staying in my center here and not modifying or accommodating somebody else based on what they think. And sometimes it's been a really nice um, communication that's followed after that. And sometimes I've pissed people off. They're like, oh, well, I can't trust you as a healer because you uh, are all about the money or that's all you care about or, you know, you won't accommodate me because you made this typo, right? And it's like, you know what, actually me accommodating you and again, um, devaluing what I do because of something little like that is not in service to you as a healer, right? So it's so interesting because here's a practitioner essentially coming to me because they would like to be better practitioners and also learn how to um, you know, be more resource sourced as a practitioner to actually make an income doing it. And then you're asking me to not charge you or to cut the rate because of mistake. So if I do that, then I'm kind of jumping into your mindset, right? 
that there actually isn't value in here or that my value is only based on the pretty storefront that I have or the pretty picture that I have or saying the right words, right? Or trying to prove my worth or demonstrating in some certain way that may or may not be authentic to me. So it's interesting, you know, because then you have experiences that sometimes make people mad. And then as a practitioner, your job really is to stay in your center and, you know, be truthful to who you are. And, um, you know, like I've said many times before, you know, accommodating others is not always in service. Yes, we do need to be tuned into one another and what's in the highest service of a group. And we can't abandon ourselves in favor of someone else. Another situation I had recently, again, around this mindset piece, um, I was contacted again by a, a, not a practitioner, somebody who was definitely exploring the healing arts, um, but not doing it in any kind of formal way and inquired into shaman school. And so we, and so, you know, I talked to her about it a little bit and um, of course she asked the price and I shared that with her. And then she immediately sent me this picture of another certification program um, along with like, just to compare, you know, right. And it was like 200, 290 bucks. And it was like four videos, like that were 15, 20 minutes long, no support, no dialogue, nothing, you know, it was just a couple of videos, essentially the same as somebody reading a book out loud, right? Now, now, now I'm not saying that there's not necessarily value in this particular program, but my question to her was like, well, do you think this is the same thing, right? And um, immediately she was like, well, no, I, and I don't, I do realize that they are two very different things and I don't mean to devalue your work. I just want you to know that working people can't afford this. And I was like, wow, that's really interesting because like I pretty much only work with people that identify as being working people, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and what's different is that they are committed to making big changes in their lives. And being able to, um, you know, acknowledge what you want for yourself and then say yes to that and go after that in, in and of itself is a mindset switch. Like so many of us want abundance, but we pinch pennies around the things that matter to us the most. Or, you know, stay in jobs that don't actually serve us, hoping that it will change sometime. Now, of course, I'm not saying go and quit your job. <laughs> It is there for a reason right now. And one of the reasons is to help build a foundation, right? And let me just back up a little bit um, from my box. In general, if you have trouble feeding yourself or housing yourself right now, it's so not the best time to do this work. <clears throat> what you want to work on is getting yourself on a, a stable place where you can have shelter and food and your basic needs met. And once you have that foundation set, that's when you can add in the higher level work. Um, and this is a cycle. It's not like a, from the beginning to the end, you know, and some of us find ourselves in various stages. So it's not to diminish where you are, but just to be real about what's realistic for you at this time. Um, because if we aren't in a situation where we are, our most basic needs of food and shelter are met, we're not going to feel safe in the world. And then it's going to be really hard to actually get in here and do the deep work we're trying to do. If you can, then, and you're finding yourself being called to this place, then the next step is committing to what you really, really, really want. And it can feel like a leap of faith. It always does. That doesn't actually go away. Um, probably the only thing that changes is that you know when you come to the leap of faith what it is and you stop turning away each time. But it still feels like a jump. For most of us, if it's actually a meaningful leap, then 
what you're thinking is, holy fuck, am I really doing this? You know, followed by, holy fuck, am I really doing this? <laughs> and then you make a decision and you show up for yourself and you heal your stuff and you learn how to work some serious magic. The universe will give you what you need when you allow it to happen. And I get it. It's hard not to let mm, the mind lead and money lead. I actually remember when I bought my um, one of my first uh, bigger coaching programs. I'd done some training in within shamanic healing for sure for um, several years. And then I did quite a bit of self-study and learning through direct experience. Um, and then I jumped into a higher level coaching offer. Actually, the first one was um, a coach that I had been following that had a recorded series and it was like 500 bucks. Um, and at the time, that was a lot of money for me to like buy one recorded thing for that much money. Like that was a huge investment and that was kind of a leap. But what I knew is that I wanted it and I knew that there was something in there for me. So I trusted. <clears throat> and from doing, I followed the directions. I did the work in that program. And around the time I was finishing that program, that same coach was offering an extended live program um, that was very high end. Well, it was around the it was around the upper five figures for the program. Um, and God, I got so excited about it, but same thing. It was like, holy crap, this is like, this is, this is commit. This would be committing. And also like, do I even have, am I even resource for that? And what's interesting actually is that at the time I had this um, car that was totally draining my bank account. And I wasn't even using it. It was mostly just sitting there and I couldn't really sell it. It was long story short, it was a drain. And what happened is from doing the lower level investment, I was actually able to get rid of that car, which opened up for about the same amount of money what the monthly exchanges were that I was putting towards this car. So I was like, holy shit, this kind of worked. Um, and and then here's this opportunity to do this thing that I've really been dreaming of. Like, honestly, the year before I was like, I don't even know what this is, but I'm really, really excited about it. And I know that I kind of want it, even though I don't even know what the program is. <laughs> um, and, you know, I kept feeling that nudge. And then all of a sudden here I am several months later and the opportunity is right in front of me. And it's like, at one point I actually decided I'll just start saving and I'll do it next year. But I quickly realized that that's not going to happen. Nobody just saves for stuff like that, really. How it works is that you say yes, and then you begin to you become the person or come into alignment with the person who is able to meet that container, right? You begin to call yourself upwards. Yep. And it's by making the commitment that what you need in your life begins to show up. Like, do you really want this? Do you really want to be the healer? Like embody the whole thing and show up. So anyway, with that program I did, I ended up jumping in on it, put a deposit on a credit card and, um, you know, figured out how to move some things around and handled the monthly exchange, um, which again was a huge amount of money for me at the time. And also within a year, I tripled my investment. And that was just the beginning because what I was actually investing in was embodying my purpose. And things work out when you invest in this way. But it does take work and it takes willingness and the ability to show up and do the work. And, you know, a lot of us are kind of used to the, to the magic pill or sort of like sitting back and having somebody do a thing for us. And, you know, what we're actually being called to do as healers is again, embody the work ourselves and shift all of that within us so that we can be in deep integrity with this work. So the bottom line, you know, the, the one rule that's true across 
um, all healing work is do no harm. And so how can we be sure that we're doing that, right? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, that's one of the gaps that I like to help um, people through. Let's get clear of some of the BS baggage that keeps hanging around us. Um, I know you know it and want to let it go, um, but it's really hard to see for ourselves. This is why we work with others and why we work in groups. This is why, especially within shamanism, within shamanic healing, um, you can use other resources and books and tools, and that can be really helpful. Mm, but you will still be missing a major piece if you're not working in with other people at some point, and probably at least within a small group. And it's just a reality of the thing. Um, right. So, and we work with others so we can um, have other eyes on our process. It's way faster also, right? We can, a lot of the stuff we can get to on our own. Like you can do anything on your own. You don't need a teacher or a program or a thing to get you there. Um, it's just what level do you want to be in that field and how long do you want it to take? So it's usually way faster when we work within a group or within a balance of a group and personal work, right? Um, like this is the quantum leap. This is the timeline jump that we are looking for. And then, um, you know, and then within um, the work that I offer, you know, you get tools that you need to understand your spiritual journey and see your negative patterns and how they work. And then practices to help turn those around. And then you get to practice working with other people doing the same thing and receiving healing on the other side um, so that we can actually go to the deepest level that a person's available for at the time. And again, this goes back to sort of where we're switching from, you know, uh, a healer that knows that they're doing good things, but is maybe like mostly just like sending love or sending light and the participant doesn't really have any idea what's going on and they might feel good too. Right. But the next level that we get called up to is like a higher embodiment of who we are and all of the gifts that we've been gathering. And it feels a little scary because we're actually like being called forward on that. And we're also moving from just making people feel better or feel peace into actually deeply healing them. Um, yes, right and getting closer to the truth of who we are. So what I offer with the Shaman School experience um, as a benefit, as a practical benefit, is confidence in what you're doing. You wanna know um, you have experience when you are actually trying to offer the work in the world, because this is highly important and highly sensitive work and you're going to want to feel confidence when you tune into somebody's soul and help them through their soul work, you know, or when you walk them through the deepest healing from their biggest trauma, right? You're going to need to be able to stand in your center and see the clearest pathway to guide them on. And in a way that actually helps, helps empower them rather than just reinforcing that other people are authorities. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of this work, again, isn't to prove that we have special powers or that we can see a thing before someone else or know something about them. The whole point of this work is to deliver medicine that is in integrity and potent. And that's how we heal deep for ourselves and for others. And we got to get a lot of our stuff out of the way, or we get a lot of us, our stuff out of the way in the process. Every time I sit in medicine space with another person or another group, I am also in process. I'm also deeply healing something in myself. Anytime I'm holding somebody through a space that they're scared to go, I have to go to the place in me where I'm most afraid. And when I do that, I open up the field so that they can do that too. So, <laughs> um, yeah, 
I didn't realize I was going to feel so soapboxy today. <laughs> I guess I'm having strong feelings here. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Shaman School and some changes that I'm making and also opportunities and details. I um, haven't really shared the details of the program this publicly before. Um, and so I'm going to do that today. Um, so one of the, let me just share a little bit about some of the tools that we learn and some of the details of how it works. Um, you get a recorded curriculum that you self-study along with our live class calls and practice sessions. And all of this work helps you explore the unseen realms um, and get regular practice translating the messages from spirit um, into the 3D. Right, so this is really important. A lot of us have very spiritual experiences, but where healers can be helpful or medicine people or spiritual leaders um, is actually being able to take that spiritual information that we've gained and deliver it in a way that lands for people. Because if we can't communicate or help create a situation where understanding can occur, then what's the point? Right. And I'm sure you've probably seen this in, in some people that are kind of like so spiritual, but you have no, like they're really hard to understand. <clears throat> and I don't doubt that they're having interesting experiences. But again, like if we can't understand what's happening or you can't help us understand how to learn from what your experience is, then it doesn't really matter. Um, so we get good at translating that information so that you can process your own spiritual journey and so that you can help other people process their spiritual journey. We explore the four directions and elements and the core energetics that underline almost everything on this planet anyway. And then once we explore those, you can begin to locate them and get really good at quickly spotting patterns so you know what medicine to apply to situations like on the fly. Um, and then we get into fun stuff, you know, for all your, all the healers and wooey types, um, you know, this is what you want to tune in for. So we learn healing tools for um, removing blocks and intrusions, for balancing the chakras and energy centers, for feel, filling leaks, for soul retrieval and inner child retrieval. We're bringing our gifts forward, working with the masculine feminine, working with ghosts, ego death, shadow work, trauma work, speaking truth, right? So we learn these practices so that we can use them to help other people. And also we get to get healed in the process. We get to balance our masculine and feminine. We get to um, experience an ego death in a safe container. We get to um, experience inner child retrieval, right? And we also get to practice doing that with other people. Because what will happen is, um, and what happens to a lot of people is they take a couple of courses that are short and, um, you know, maybe they practice it once in class and then they go out there and they try to offer it and they slip into self-doubt quickly because they don't have more um, integrated tools to help them read the field and the situation. So usually what happens is they end up kind of calling in clients that aren't in alignment for, for the work. Um, so they might have a couple bad experiences and then they sort of take it as a sign that they're not supposed to do the work. Um, and so we want to really help you feel embodied and confident so that you can meet the right people that you are most likely to be able to help on a deep level, right? And who are the best match for you. And this is true, even if you're not trying to do healing work directly, right? Um, you know, a lot of people are interested in, in not just the shamanic path, but in healing arts in general, strictly for personal healing reasons, right? And we can apply these to so many different situations um, in the same way, like drawing the right people to yourself in your life, finding the right, you know, life partners, finding the right line of work for you that's in alignment for you so that you're not putting up a lot of energy on being worried and putting on a lot of energy on being fearful and putting out a lot of energy on being in self-doubt. These are things that we do to keep ourselves small and usually come up right before the gates open into your next layer. So what we want to do is get our eye on that, get our eye on the way they show up in your life so that you're not actually um, 
you know, in reaction when they show up. So you see them for what they are and can make a choice about where you want to go from there. Um, right. So on top of curriculum pieces, we have live weekly calls. And so each month we meet for journey work and journey weaving and sharing our journeys with one another. Each month I offer healing work demonstrations. So you have the opportunity to receive healing work directly from me or to sit in on that and watch how it works. Right. And again, this work, the way I offer the shaman school program, this is all virtual. Um, and also it's highly engaged. So sometimes you meet people or hear about like distance healing and what they mean is they sit there and like do a healing process to you. And then you don't hear or see, or know anything that's happening, but it, but I mean, it works, it does help. Um, but again, like it's not super, um, attractive to people who want to have a healing experience if they don't really aren't a part of it. And the next level we're looking for is being able to guide the person so that they can see the problem for themselves and they can actually heal themselves. That's like the next level, right? So we also spend a couple of weeks each month breaking into small groups and practicing with one another. And we get to do this in a container that's safe where people understand what's happening Right. And so you're not having to take um, a, something that you've learned or read and try and like try it out on somebody for the first time. And it may or may not work or it may or may not be the right client for that tool, um, you know, or maybe we're kind of stuck in only working with friends and family. And so our next place that we're moving to is actually bringing the work that we've highly cultivated forward which is where a lot of people are stuck. They take some classes, they learn how to do some healing things and they know that they're really good at it. It might be, um, that might be something that they kind of squish down. I think a lot of us actually know where our genius is, um, but we just haven't given ourselves permission to be it, right? And so we talk a lot about fears and often the frame is like the self-doubt or the anxiety or, getting it wrong, but a lot of times our biggest fear is actually being badasses at it. You know, like our biggest fear is just as being really amazing at this thing we came here to do. So this is a piece that we can work um, and support you around also is the stuff that you've been cultivating that you've been working on for years and it's just ready to have a clear framework and a pathway for you to bring forward which is a beautiful part about the shamanic path and shamanic healing is it's also, you know, it's so foundational. There aren't a lot of, um, again, like you can get this in certain in lineages and in certain languages, but in general, shamanism doesn't really have um, like a lot of, um, you know, specific vocabulary that you need to learn or, you know, the texts that you need to read, right? Um, we're learning from direct experience and you know, working with the spirit world directly. Um, yeah, so it blends very well with other modalities. And this kind of comes back to where I started with that cross section, that center point of where your gifts actually are and what you, your unique medicine that you're here to deliver, right? And so all the other stuff that, you've been studying is you've been studying in support of that too, because that's all part of the package that you offer. Yeah. Where I'm shifting is, um, so let me share a little bit more about um, the changes I'm making and the offer that I have. So, um, I have decided to increase the price of shaman school. Um, it, and I'm also making some changes within the program. So largely it will run the same, but I'm actually adding in, it'll be a little bit longer and adding in some more one-on-one -on -one support. So currently the one-on-one -on -one support is available, but it's sort of like an add-on. And so this will be woven into the program. So it's a really nice mix of sort of spiritual apprenticeship and group learning. Um, and, you know, it requires a lot more of my time. So the exchange for that is increasing. 
And so what I'm doing today and what is available for the next week is um, I'm offering this at, um, at um, $29.95, which is the last time I'll have this offer. Um, and then from here, um, where I'm actually going is $79.95 for the whole program. So that being said, if you are, have you, if you've been courting this at all, it's a really good time to join. <laughs> and of course you wanna go when you're ready. Um, and it's not something that you uh, necessarily need to rush. And also we can really get into the mind and talk ourselves out of the things that are most important to us and that we value the most. And that might actually be in highest alignment with who we are, right? Um, and also like, I get it. <laughs> like it's nice to be able to not be stressed about something. So if this is something you've been courting, this is a really good opportunity to join. And um, I do have people come back after um, a special offer and they do pay full exchange. It's just so that's clear. Um, I have worked with a couple of people that were like, hey, let me know next time you're doing a discount. And I just wanna be clear, that's not how this program works. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, there is a certificate um, of completion that's part of the program also. Um, and to do that, there are requirements. So just by paying the money and enrolling does not um, give you access to that certificate. Um, and also, you know, this is where, you know, my preference is to work with people that are really ready to really available for doing the deep healing, personal healing that they've been calling in for themselves and are committed to the work and are excited to show up and engage. Right. And I know we all have lives and lots of things to manage. So there's, of course, some flexibility for everyone. Um, and um, that's kind of where I'm headed. And that's where I, or, the people that I already work with are committed to the work and exploring and showing up. And so that can be a container that you could actually be part of. Right. And, you know, you shouldn't necessarily need to change your life to do this work and who you are to do this work, um, but you do have to want it, right? Um, and again, you know, for many people, what's their call to this work, and it might not be for a direct application, like they might not actually be wanting to directly be a healer or make an income as a healer or do shamanic healing, but they are being called to a higher evolutionary purpose, maybe in their family or their community or their work. And so what you're doing again is deeply healing those blocks in you that are kind of keeping the brakes on in your system and that are having you respond to the fear. So we work through that. And then you learn all sorts of higher level energetics that help you be the person to elevate the community that you're part of, right? Being able to help um, do what is called for in the field to restore harmony or to take a group of people to, you know, where we're going, where we have our eye on, on the new earth, um, where we're shifting from this hierarchy back to the circle, right? And so many people are actually called to this path for, through that lens as well. You know, you have to be ready to step into your real purpose. You have to want to help others on the deepest level. Mm -hmm. You have to want to start putting energy in your life into the places that you want instead of where you don't want or putting um, energy into places that give you life instead of taking life away. You have to want to understand your spiritual gifts, what your gifts are, why you have them so you can become a spiritual guide for others. And Lord knows um, we need it. We need it. There, I, I'm sure you can attest to all of the awakening that has been happening and it's been growing exponentially. And so, you know, this is another piece that a lot of people get stuck on that I want to speak to probably really quickly. This will be about wrap up time. But um, so oftentimes, especially when we get into the spiritual arts or on the spiritual path, we feel like we need to have 
ourselves completely clear before we start offering our work. And it's just not true. It's just not true. Um, because wherever you are, there is somebody that is one or two steps behind you that is looking at you being like, Fuck, I really just want to be where that person is. And whatever your spiritual experiences so far have been, have some medicine for someone else. Right. Um, and wherever you, whatever you've experienced on your awakening journey is happening to somebody else right now, and they need guides. Not to mention, there's also a shift in money and values and how we hold ourselves in the world and the hierarchy, you know, that's all part of the new earth. Sometimes, again, with the language within um, shamanism and indigenous cultures and shamanic cultures where we can get confused as we, there, the old paradigm had that um, only special people did this work. And this is also something we're dismantling because actually no one is special, right? So you might come into this world, like we talked about earlier with the spectrum of the spiritual gifts, you might come into the, the, this world, you know, already heightened with some of those spiritual gifts, um, but that doesn't make you special. And if you come into this world, not that way, that doesn't mean that you can't heighten your spiritual gifts. Um, and really where we're moving to what's being asked is in this shift from relating to one another through suffering, which is how most of us relate to one another, you know, griping or, or complaining or, you know, through our hardships, right? Um, we're moving from that to relating to one another through um, deep self-power and self-responsibility. And so it's only natural that we would, more people would be called to awaken the shaman within them and take responsibility for restoring harmony in themselves. Where again, the old paradigm had maybe somebody who was in charge of that in the community. Now we're being asked to do that for ourselves. And in the process, we get to grow our gifts and grow our awareness and deepen our understanding, um, you know, so we can continue what's happening in evolution. And we can continue with what the earth is dreaming for us. Mm -hmm. So with all of that being said, um, thank you for joining me today. Um, hi to all of you beautiful people, Maria and Ari and Amity and Kai. Thanks for tuning in for a second. Um, <clears throat> If you're interested in taking a look at the program and if it's right for you, um, feel free to comment on this post or we can do a private message. Um, I also have the Zoom link available just below this video. Let me double check to make sure it's still there. Yes, so if you want, I'll be hanging around the Zoom for uh, another 15, 20 minutes. Um, and so you're welcome to pop on and we can talk a little bit about this. So, um, and again, just to speak to the mind and the numbers. So this offer is available for the next week. There are different um, payment plans. So uh, there's a couple different ways that you can make the exchange um, that are fairly flexible. Um, but again, you know, it is a commitment. It's not a, like, I'm gonna come and then dip after a couple months. Um, we will be in a contract and an agreement. Um, and that's so that I can hold you to what it is that you're actually calling in for yourself. And you can actually give yourself the gift of committing to yourself and investing in yourself and your purpose. Super fun. It's super fun. It really is. It's a amazing. This journey has been so amazing for me um, on both sides, both as a coach helping people, um, you know, really awaken their magic and step into their purpose. And also, of course, I receive coaching. I am, you know, I have a business coach and I have a spiritual coach and I'm in lineage training and I do plant medicine work. And so I have this whole group of people that support me in my work so that I can be in alignment with who I am. And, um, and it's really a beautiful way of shifting the economy. Super cool. So thank you again for joining me today. Feel free to contact me if you have questions. Um, you can always email me too. My email is my name, Katie Joe Holton at, um, I'm sorry, is Katie Joe at HoltonHealingArts.com. Yes, beautiful. And I'm going to be popping on here. I'm going to make a commitment to getting on and doing these lives 
um, more often, at least once, once a month um, and with potent information to share with you. So um, let me know if you have any topics that you would like me to speak about. <clears throat> I'm always interested in interacting with you guys and um, it helps me to know what questions you have, right? And also, if you've worked with me at all, you know that my teachings are from direct experience. So I'm going to share, you know, where I'm at in my process and, you know, teach from the experiences versus a textbook. And these are my words for you today. I hope you enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. <clears throat> Encourage you to take a moment and be with your heart today. And give a second to give a little gratitude to this beautiful earth that we are on that is home for us all. Bye-bye for now.